When the world's first successful open heart surgery was performed in 1952, it was heralded as a revolutionary advancement for modern medicine. Since then, heart bypass surgery has benefited the lives of countless patients, but in recent years, how the procedure is performed has been hotly debated within the medical community. Joining us to walk us through both sides of the discussion is Dr. Christopher McGovern, cardiothoracic surgeon at Morristown Memorial Hospital. Dr. McGovern, thanks so much for coming back on the show. Great to be here, Tanya. So bypass surgery, it's hard to believe it's been over 50 years, but it really is sort of the hallmark of cardiac uh, medicine, isn't it? It is. It is. Bypass surgery or coronary artery bypass graft, and we call it cabbage for short, has been around, as you said, for almost 50 years. It is an operation that's been designed to treat patients with coronary artery disease. And today, it's one of the most commonly performed operations in the country. And this is the way it works. Patients with coronary artery disease develop blockages in the arteries that supply blood to the heart, like this little model shows us. Decreased blood flow to the heart can result in angina, chest pain, a heart attack, or even death. And bypass surgery is one of our modalities to treat this condition. Unlike angioplasty, which our cardiology colleagues do, where they go in and stretch the artery and fix the blockage from the inside, we don't remove the blockage, but we redirect the blood around the blockage, and that's why it's called a bypass operation. Very interesting, and there are two methods of doing this, correct? The on-pump and the off-pump method, is that's that right? That's right. The, that's absolutely correct. The, the conventional approach, uh, and the approach that's been around for many years, is what we call an on-pump approach. And that uses the heart-lung machine. We call the heart-lung machine, as surgeons, the pump. So that's an on-pump approach. And the way it works is that we open the chest, either through the front or through the side. We place large catheters or tubes in and around the heart. And we divert all the blood away from the heart to this heart-lung machine. We then go on-pump and we ask the heart-lung machine basically to take over the role of the heart and it mechanically pumps blood to the rest of the body and that permits us actually to stop the heart Unbelievable. and then with the heart stopped we reconstruct the blood supply to the heart using veins and arteries that we sew to the heart and then we restart the heart and take the patient off the heart-lung machine and this is the traditional method as you said that has right. been working so well for so long right but recently when did the off-pump method become uh, you well, over the last decade, there has been an explosion in interests uh, directed toward minimally invasive surgery and mm -hmm. less invasive surgery. And cardiac surg surgery has been no exception to this. We now are able to do bypass surgery using much smaller incisions. We're actually able to use a robot to do portions of the operation. But the biggest single advancement we've made in minimally invasive heart surgery is that we can now do this operation without the heart-lung machine. And the big difference, as you may imagine, if we don't have the heart-lung machine as backup, we can't actually stop the heart. The mm -hmm. heart has to continue to beat. So we've learned to do this operation now with the heart beating, and that's our off-pump approach. And now, I you've brought something with you. Is this to demonstrate, uh, is this object here used in the off-pump That's, that's some of the equipment that we use. Okay. As you can imagine, it's difficult to operate on a heart that's beating 60 to 100 sure. times a minute. And some people have said that it's similar to trying to tie your shoelaces when you're running on a <laughs> treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna work Which too no well. Which no one would wanna yeah. do. So fortunately, the medical device companies have kept pace up pace with what we have done, and they have designed some fascinating and innovative tools that permit us to stabilize mm -hmm. portions of the heart so that we can operate on the heart while it's beating. All right, so we've talked about the on-pump method and the off-pump method, and here's where the debate comes in, right? right? Because uh, I guess people are, are not arguing, but there's some people that feel the traditional method is just fine, and why, That's right. why mess with? We've, we've, we've been debating this for years. Um, in fact, when we first learned to do this, we thought, wow, wouldn't this be great? We don't have to stop the heart. We don't have to put patients in the heart-lung machine. These patients should do great. There should be less bleeding, less lung and kidney problems, less neurologic problems. That's what we thought we were going to find. But over the years, looking at studies, the trend has suggested that maybe off-pump may have some benefits, but there's been no real convincing data mm. that that's a better way to do the operation. And that being the case, surgeons are relatively conservative group of sure. individuals. We're not jumping on this bandwagon until we're convinced that it's a better way. And there's been a recent study by the New England Journal of Medicine that also weighed in on this discussion, coming down in favor of the traditional on-pump method. That's right. This was a landmark study. This was a large prospective multi-center study that looked at more than 2,000 patients.
and they were asking the question, is there an advantage to off-pump surgery? 2,000 patients, 18 different VA medical centers over a six-year period. They took all the patients that needed bypass surgery and randomized them into two groups. Just before they went into the operating room, you either had your operation done on pump or off pump. And then after a year, they looked at the results. They looked at the outcomes. And what they found was that there was no significant benefit to having your surgery done off pump. And in fact, the outcomes were better if you had the surgery done on pump or with a heart-lung machine. You had a more complete operation. The patency of the grafts were better and the survival was better. Interesting. So what should patients take away from this when they're talking to their doctors? Who might be a good candidate for off-pump versus on-pump? That's a, that's a great question. And I think that the, the take-home message messages are that on-pump surgery is still the gold mm -hmm. standard. It has a proven track record. It has survival rates of 98 to 99 percent, even in older and sicker patients. Is there a role for, for off-pump surgery and, and minimally invasive surgery? Absolutely, particularly in older patients and in patients with calcium in the arteries surrounding their heart. But is an off-pump approach universally better for all patients? No. I think the best thing you can do when you go to see a surgeon is not have a preconceived idea about how you want to go, mm -hmm. but find a seasoned surgeon that does a lot of off-pump and a lot of on-pump surgery and let him or her decide what they think is going to be the best approach for you because every patient's different. Dr. McGovern, thank you so much. This has been a fascinating discussion. And remember, for answers to all your health and medical questions, head to the health page at abcnews.com. We'll be right back.